Welcome to the 8 past 10 podcast, number 60. 60? Hi, Christian. How are you doing, Nick? I'm fine. Well, we can't congratulate each other on a 60th episode. No, no, no. We keep on congratulating. I think that uh, it's up to the readers if it's worth it, uh, praising and cor- congratulating this. We are being in 2020. I'm going to break something right now, yeah. which is a shitty year. Yeah. 2020 is a cheap Parisian hole. Yeah. Uh, with uh, all kinds of social diseases. Yeah. So I'd like to speed up to what's happening next week. And I know that you will bring something next week that we will talk a lot about. Yeah. But while we cannot talk about it, and while I'm still trampling <laughs> with what we're going to talk about, yeah. we should talk about something else. Yeah, we do. We do. I think that the other one is m- is more important if we, uh, if we have it live in the studio here. So let's wait for that. Yes. But we're never short of topics and footage. Oh, and no. uh, yesterday we were all... Or it's not yesterday, I'm sorry. But last week we were surprised by uh, the announcement by Philips. Because another Paul Newman and another Steve McQueen are coming up for auction. Yes. What do you think? Do you want to know what I think? Yeah. Well, okay. let's let first explain right. for the readers. It's yeah. uh, because it's it's it's, uh, it's a it's Paul Newman's second Daytona. I believe there were actually three. So this one is not uh, a 6239, no. which the first one was with a very distinct Paul Newman dial. Mm-hmm. This is a 6263, which I think was in production for about 25 years. The 6263 is the Daytona that ended the Valshu-powered Daytona. Exactly. So we, we already had a Paul Newman, Paul Newman, exactly. and now we have a non-Paul Newman, Paul Newman. Sir, yes, sir. And actually, it was on the cover of that great book by Matt Ranick, uh, A Man and His Watch. Yeah. And actually, it was also on the rear. So I think that if Matt has not already sold out... <laughs> A man and his watch. I think anybody who follows uh, the auction will see will will buy the rest of the books of Matt's great book. I think Philips will b- have bought the whole supply, right? Probably it will be if they have a live auction at that point. Yeah, they will put it on the seat in the room. That would be great. Yeah, as I understood, I, I read some articles. Uh, uh, d- the first article I read yesterday was about was on the Wall Street Journal by Michael uh, Clarizo. Yeah, because actually, Philips uh, thanked him. Uh, Paul Boutrous actually thanked him for, for you know, opening that whole yeah, story. Because it's, of course, it, we have lots of speculation. Is it is this going to reach 70.7 million? I am going to have to say no. This Paul Newman is not a Paul Newman. No. That's my first argument. Secondly, a Paul Newman, without being Paul Newman's Paul Newman, is a rare Rolex. True. And that's 6263 is not a rare Rolex. But again, um, he gifted it to his daughter in 2008 while he was terminally already ill. Ill. Yeah. yeah. And the watch comes from her. Also, you have to remember that we knew there was a 6263. Yeah. Uh, we've seen him wear the watch during races. Yeah. In 1985, he gifted his. Uh, f- uh, his uh, Daughter's then boyfriend, uh, the Paul Newman. Paul Newman. That's that, eighty five, that and we thought it was it was g- it was missing in action. Yeah, and then it it popped up on on his wrist, and he realized what he was wearing. Now the daughters, uh, they know that mm. their father's watches are valuable. Yeah, again, a uh, large amount of the of the auction result will go to charity. Yeah, very much in the spirit of the Newman family. That's also al- al- always a driver. So uh, basically what you're saying is... Um, I'm not expecting a 17.8. No. I will expect a high number because the bidder of the Paul Newman, Paul Newman will probably watch the auction as well. We'll need this one as well. Yeah. So this is... The, the Paul Newman, Paul Newman was, of, co- of course, without any comparison. That is yes. up there. And That's that it. is the, the reference right now. And this is basically what you're saying. This is... A great vintage Daytona owned by a, f- a celebrity. Yes, sir. And the celebrity is, of course, always a premium to the price, yeah. especially when the celebrity is is uh, of the, the likes of Paul Newman or Steve McQueen. So it will be it will be millions, of course. Think of this. If you see a gentleman or a gentlewoman uh, wear a uh, 6239 with a Paul Newman dial, you will go like, that's a Paul Newman. Yeah. So already that's special. When you see somebody with a 6263, you go like, that's a nice older Daytona. So you don't have that oomph on it. Yeah. He didn't start 
the collector's frenzy with a 6263. No. And it's a far more common vintage Rolex yeah. to be seen out in the wild. Yeah. You won't even recognize it. Uh, if so you, yeah. I would say between 10 and 12 million max dollars. It's still a very high number. That's a very high number, but it's still also Paul Newman. Yeah. And yeah. True, and I, and I that. think, let's just say the gentleman who bought the Paul Newman, Paul Newman will buy this in one as well. He will just wait until the modern Daytona that Paul Newman also owned yeah. will come to market. Yeah. Then he will have all three. Yeah. Okay, le- let's now leave the, the, the monetary issue, the, the, the market value, etc., and let's move into the storytelling, because important why we are talking millions anyway about watches like this is because of the great storytelling, the great story that sure. comes with the watch. And what the Paul Newman, Paul Newman, and the non-Paul Newman, Paul Newman have in common is that they were both gifted to Paul Newman by his wife. John Woodward. John Woodward. Yeah. And they both have the inscription, and that's... that's uh, <laughs> I really like that story. The first one, the Paul Newman, Paul Newman, had the inscription, Drive Carefully, Me. Yeah, me. And that is something that, that uh, well, every wife will probably tell her husband, especially when her husband is a, a, a very professional amateur racing driver mm-hmm. like Paul Newman was. He drove Le Mans several times with great success. But the non-Paul Newman, Paul Newman had a slightly different encryption on the back. Mm-hmm. It says, drive slowly, Joanne. Yeah. So me could have been anyone. <laughs> me is... P- <laughs> but I, I, it's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a way more private watch. It's from me to you. The first one, yeah. And here, he, he, you know, his wife reminds me, by the way, my name is Joanne. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> it's... It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the other me. Yeah, it's not the other me. But I think also the watch was gifted to her, uh, um, uh, by her in 1983, if I, w- if I have it correctly. And that was, Paul, Paul Newman was already in his 50s. Yeah. And he was still driving, race driving. Yeah. I can imagine that she said, well... Don't go for the uh, <laughs> for the podium. Yeah. Just drive slowly. Don't end up in a wheelchair. No, exactly. No. Which he didn't. No. So um, it's a great story, and we will see what's the date of the auction. I'm I'm not sure. Well, uh, I don't know. I it's only natural that um, Phillips gets it because yeah. they sold the other one. Yeah, sure, sure. But the next one is not per se natural that Phillips got it. But this is the next one, the Steve McQueen. Hoya Monaco, 1971, gifted to his uh, onset mechanic, I guess. Yeah. Or was it just his normal mechanic, Mr. No, Hague? it was his chief mechanic. And, and at the set. It's good to know that, that at that time, uh, um, Steve McQueen created his famous movie, Le Mans, yeah. which was actually a movie which is all about racing. The storyline in the movie is, is almost absent. It's only about <laughs> dr- racing because he was... Like Paul Newman, a passionate race driver. He produced it himself. He produced it, it himself. It was not a success. It, w- it, it became a success later. Later on, it, yeah. It's now a cult movie. And yes. then it was, I think because of the, 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 the storyline, it was not a big success. But I think he couldn't care less because thi- he had to do this yeah. bec- as Steve McQueen. Uh, well, he, had, he had six Monaco's. Five. Five. I believe that Nunley, Nunley was the prop manager. Okay. And Jack Hoyer approached Nunley with five Hoyer monocles on a tray. Yeah. And the reason why they were Hoyer, it was because um, the driver who trained McQueen also wore a Hoyer because he drove Ferrari. Yeah. What five. was his name? Five. Um, I think it was David Piper. Was it? Not oh, sure no, no, no. I'm, I'm so, David Piper was involved. Actually, he lost one of his legs. Mm. With an accident uh, during the, but it it was, uh, of course they had more watches, so they had five watches, five Hoya monocles to be used yeah. during the the recording sessions of the, the of the Altavia movie. Altavia was actually the the official Formula One driver's watch. Yeah, yeah, and they were engraved with the driver's blood type on the back. <laughs> so you know if they had a crash, yeah, some of them were actually gold. So I think that's why Steve McQueen chose to have Hoya. Also with the Hoya driving suit that he's wearing. Yeah. Um, um, and so he wanted to represent the same brand 
Was it Joe Sifford? I think it was Joe it Sifford. It was Joe Sifford. Joe You're Sifford. right. There the you Swiss go. racing driver. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So he wanted to wear the same brand of watch as Sifford, but not the Altavia. Yeah. So he wanted to to get the Hoyer. At that point, the Hoyer was pretty new. Uh, the Hoyer was released in 1969. It was yeah. the first automatic chronograph. Yeah. And um, it was relaunched, was it, I think, was it 98 by Tag Heuer in 5,000 pieces? Yeah. Either 95 or 98. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Uh, David's going to put a little plaque here. It says 95 and 98. They made 5,000 pieces where it also only said Hoya uh, on the dial. That is just a great watch. It's sold out within two shakes of a lamb's tail. Yeah. And Tag Hoya at that point, Tag Hoya, realized we ma- we did something well. Yeah. So ever since the, the Monaco has been a part of the collection in many different iterations, and it is the latest Takoya to receive the O2 in-house movement. Yeah. Which is actually a triple register chronograph. But they solved the the, uh, the constant seconds by six very discreetly. So you almost don't pay notice to that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it looks like it be compact, but it's not. Yeah. It's a good looking piece. And I bet it's an even better piece with the high O2 uh, movement inside. How d- how do you value the importance of the Monaco uh, these days now in the current Tag Heuer collection? I think it, to me, it is one of the models that has been in the collection the longest. Yeah. In what it looks like right now, you can't change it. Of course, there was the uh, belt-driven V4. Yeah, Monaco. Uh, that's an odd watch. Did it Th- ever? Did it ever become a commercial piece? Yeah, it did. I think it did. That's a radical watch. That was a radical watch, but I yeah. it was hugely expensive, of yes. course. Yes, it was. Uh, um, but yeah, that so that also shows the 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 variety that they have put under the under the um, iconic yeah. uh, 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 Monaco case. It is an iconic piece because yeah. it has been produced in that look and feel. For 51 years. Yeah. 51 years. Yeah. And I still think that right now, with all the iterations, that the ones that come closest to the, the to what Steve McQueen wore in 1971... Is the latest one. And are the most commercially interesting ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it is it is it is a very cool piece. I think part of the, the, the legend that was built was also because... Steve McQueen, when when uh, uh, Le Mans was launched, of course you have all these big movie posters uh, um, uh, out there, which are now in itself very very collectible. And on many of those posters, you see Steve McQueen with the yeah. with the monocle Absolutely. on his wrist. It, it is an iconic setting. But actually, the I believe this was May two thousand and twelve. One of the five Hoya monocos was sold on auction. Yeah, for two hundred twelve thousand dollars. Back then, it was a lot of money. No, it was more. Uh, it was no, seven no, 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 in the no. seven hundred. Was it seven hundred? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was seven hundred. F- okay, then it was his fifty-five twelve Submariner. Then oh, okay, yeah, that sold for two hundred and twelve thousand dollars. And then the funny thing is the 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 um, the watch sold for as you say seven hundred thousand seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. But his driving suit sold for ten million, right? <laughs> I forgot that, but that something that's like that. It was it yeah. was like mad, but he was in that. He farted in that one. He, he he was sweating in that suit. That was a lot more Steve McQueen than just scratching the case back of the Hoya Monaco, right? Yeah. Try to go to check that auction. I am. It's it's funny to see how times have changed because some years ago, that was a unique Patek Philippe, yeah, and a Ferrari. And the Ferrari <laughs> sold for good price, yeah. but the watch sold for the double. So back then, the driver's suit were more important than the watch, yeah. and I think helped a lot by Philips. The watch becomes more important than anything else. Yeah, yeah, and that's Philips is is doing. We have to praise them. They're doing a an, an tremendous job in. Creating the atmosphere, telling the stories that need to be told to make these watches super, super attractive. Did you receive their latest catalogs? No, not yet. One of them is a book. 
That's the white one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For the you know watches from the last uh, two uh, decades. Yeah. Um, it's a gorgeous book, and uh, I helped uh, do a, a different book for GMT, which actually is exactly the same theme, not yeah. the same yeah. brands. Yeah. And it took I don't know how many journalists to finish that GMT book over the. I think we spent six or seven months yeah, on that. Yeah, okay, you mentioned that before, yeah. Uh, I wrote two chapters, and other, my colleagues wrote uh, each two chapters. I mean, Philips comes out with a catalog that looks like a book <laughs> that 20 journalists spent six months doing, and and Philips just did that. Yeah, but they have, uh, they have, <laughs> they have quite a team, and probably some freelancers as well. I'm so not quite sure that Philips wrote this themselves. No, probably not. Okay, let's go back to the auction. I'm, I checked it now mm -hmm. live on the internet. Mm -hmm. the, the the auction date is December 12th. Oh, so it's still 2020. It's still 2020, and it will be, I, I guess it will be an online auction, of co maybe with a limited uh, appearance that you can be live there. But it's Probably the watch is in the US, because Paul Boutrous, who's in charge of Philips US, yeah. uh, he announced the watch. So I think the watch came to Paul. And since Aurel cannot just jet back and forth like he did with the Paul Newman, Paul Newman, yeah. he flew to California, had three drinks, flew back home. See, probably the estimate is a million dollars, which was the estimate of the Paul Newman, Paul Newman. Yeah. And Aurel was afraid that he estimated way too high. When he came back from California, he promised the, the, the seller that, you know, I'm going to stop with a million dollars. And then, he, you know, on the way back in the plane, he got a little insecure. Mm -hmm. And he contacted one of his uh, friends, uh, who was a big Daytona uh, a connoisseur. Yeah. And that gentleman said, I don't know, $200,000, $300,000? Oh and Aurel is like, fuck. And then he said, I have to call another guy. So he called another Daytona specialist. And that guy said, I don't know. Four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. So <laughs> when he starts the auction and says a million dollars, he's like, <laughs> "Of course, that was a gentleman. Um, that was an agent or a manager for a very wealthy Italian gentleman, who just before the auction said, oh, you know, we're gonna bid five million. We're just gonna scream five million. And he was sitting in the room, and Aurel tells him, "Please, do not destroy my auction. Please don't do that." So when the 10 million bid came in yeah. on the phones from Tiffany, yeah. everybody wants to be called Tiffany now, right? Um, girls. Not everyone. Well, they're <laughs> girls. And uh, we'll ask LVMH. LVMH how they, how doesn't want to call no, Tiffany. No, they, right I, I think they're dating again, actually. LVMH they're dating. They're, they're in talks. Dating. Yeah, yeah. They're not fighting anymore. No, so, so when the 10 million bid comes in, yeah. like very fast. Out of the blue. Aurel thinks it's 2 million. And so he has... And then he was looking at the gentleman who wanted to raise, and say, you know, five million. He was like, oh, that, I guess that leaves me out. So Aurel is just like, you're out, Sonny. <laughs> you're out. <laughs> Don't destroy my auction. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just, I mean, I, I, I think I recently wrote an, wrote an article on on um, on that experience from Aurel's side because yeah. he was in Copenhagen not long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and even Aurel, who has seen a lot, was shocked. Yeah. And it was a private individual who bought the watch. Yeah. I think that private individual will again bid on this one. He will have marked December 12th in his agenda. So the Steve McQueen, we have five of those. So they're not unique. We do know that this was gifted by McQueen to Haig. To Haig. Yeah, yeah, that was on the last day of the um, of the recordings. And uh, th they were in the in the pits. They were they were dismantling stuff. And Steve McQueen takes off his watch and gives it to Hake. He says, "Here for you." And Hake was a bit reluctant. He says, "Well, shouldn't you give it to your son, to your family?" I don't know. No, it's for you, and it's already engraved. And he turned it around, and it says, "I have it here in front of me." To Hake, Le Mans, nineteen seventy. Yeah. I mean, you so you you get a Rolex where it says Le Mans twenty four winner when you win Le Mans. Yeah. But this one, to Hague, Le Mans, 1971. Yeah. Dude, that's the case bag engraving you want. So go bid on that higher, Le Mans. He, he kept it for 50 years, and now it will be sold. Yeah, at the same auction. It's it's called what? Driving? Yeah, it says... No, no, no. The auction has a special uh, theme, right? 
Yeah, it has a special theme. It's under here, Racing Pools Event. Exactly. That's what it's called. And actually, I was supposed to go to the auctions with Philips in early November. Mm -hmm. It's like three days of auctions. Yeah. It's not because it's raining outside. It's because of that goddamn corona. <sighs> That's another story. I'm going to follow from home because of that auction. There's also, uh, of course, I'm not going to bid. No, but that's a uh, that's a fantastic Patek Philippe world time on it. This is uh, the auctions have become ent entertainment right now. Yes, everybody sits. It's like you want to go to the drink, circus, we take a glass of wine, and sit down and 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 follow the auction. So uh, I think Philips should start this trend and invite to a movie theater coming to a theater near you. Live auction, Philips, November fifth to seventh, and have drinks. Don't miss out. Yeah. Let's do that club live and, and just on a big screen go like, yeah, that's great. That's <laughs> great. I love it. So you're going to have that little button there where you bid. Yeah. Right? In the in the chair of your cinema. Anyway, that's the future of Philips. They're going to have little cinemas around the world where you can like sit back, relax, listen to the eight track, push that button and bid on that two to four million estimate Patek Philippe. But don't time. push too much because it's not healthy for your bank account. Screw the bank account. They're going to give you negative uh, 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 interest rates anyway. That is so true. That Spend is so money. true. And that is why they're probably, uh, this will go on for a while, the record-breaking uh, historical watches yeah. with a good story. Anyway, that was a lot of Philips. That yes. was a lot of Paul Newman again. That was a lot of Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen, welcome back to the uh, auction world. Fantastic. Can't wait to see when the handheart he wore will be auctioneered. He wore a handheart. He wore a handheart. Remember Waco. This, this he did a bronze version yeah. of the handheart, yeah. and you could you could order the bell stuff. The bell stuff jacket. Uh, that was a great great opportunity. It was yeah. a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And handheart themselves just released the manual wound version of that watch. Yeah, beautiful piece. Yeah, 150 piece. I think the way the revolution the rake version was 150. It was pieces. 150 pieces. Yeah, and a good yeah good price. Anyway, okay. that was a long show. Uh, thank you for listening or viewing, or whatever you feel like doing, make sure that you bid in December. And make sure that you subscribe, subscribe to our channel and follow us on Daily Watch, Christian Hagen, 8 past 10, Nick Amayer. You know all the channels to find. Let's talk later. <laughs>